Hey guys, welcome back to another build video and this week I'm going to show you how I built this plywood coffee table with a herringbone pattern. I saw someone else online make a table similar to this one, but I didn't like how it was completely made out of plywood, so I decided to add a walnut border and metal legs to give it a more modern touch. I'm also excited to announce that I now have t-shirts available. If you'd like to help support the channel more, go pick one up. And with that, let's get into the build video. The first thing I needed to do for this build was to cut a bunch of strips out of this 3 quarter inch maple plywood. After marking and trying to line up my track for the first cut, I realized how inconsistent my cuts were going to be. Instead, I ended up using a little block of wood that I could use to line up my track and get more consistent cuts. All the strips were about 1 and an eighth inch wide, which will end up being the thickness of the table. I wanted the final dimensions of the table to be about 48 by 24 inches, so I continued cutting strips until I had plenty for this. Next, I moved over to the miter saw to cut all the pieces to their final length of about 3.5 inches. It's important here to use a stop block that won't move so you can get consistent pieces, as I had the first clamp I used loosen and I had to recut a bunch of pieces. I also found it was best to let the blade stop completely before raising it as it would hit the pieces and chip the wood otherwise. After filling two milk crates completely full of plywood pieces, I moved into the shop to start assembling the plywood pattern. I'm making a herringbone pattern with the plywood pieces, so I started by nailing down two strips perpendicular to each other that will act as a guide. I used 1 inch nails in my cordless DeWalt brad nailer, which I really enjoy using as I shot almost a thousand nails in this project. The last thing I needed to do was queue up a couple good podcasts from the Outdoor Podcast, which I've really enjoyed listening to lately. I used my guide to make sure the first two pieces are exactly perpendicular to each other because all the pieces following will reference these two pieces. As you'll see in a second, I ended up making a big mistake and nailing the pieces to the wrong side. This didn't allow the two sides to be connected by nails, so there's a big gap down the middle. Because of this, I ended up clamping that piece together and setting it aside to try to save it and just restarting. As you can see now, I'm working in the opposite direction as I was before, which allows me to nail pieces to both sides of the herringbone pattern. After I had a small section of the herringbone pattern done, I started moving horizontally so that I get the final width of the table. I forgot to mention I'm using Type On 2 wood glue to keep everything together and using a speed square to make sure everything's aligned properly. Once I got the piece down to its final width of about 24 inches, I nailed down some scrap pieces and started working on the length.
Once I had used up almost all the pieces, I cut the last few in half so I could fill up the gaps, reducing how much I had to cut off on the end. After using my router sled to get the tabletop nice and flat, I used natural wood filler to fill in all the little gaps that I had, which were a lot. This is where I ran into the biggest problem in this whole project because the wood filler just didn't look that great with this maple plywood. I found it was fine when filling gaps that I had made when assembling the table, but there was also lots of gaps just in the plywood layers that didn't look so great. This is where I think high quality Baltic birch plywood would just be so much better as it wouldn't have so many gaps in the wood. As you'll see later though, the table actually looks amazing with the finish on it, you can only see the wood filler if you get really really close. Next I got to cutting the table to its final dimensions using my track saw. As you can see there's a bunch of brad nails along the sides which I'm gonna have to cut through, so I just bought a cheap blade and made multiple passes when making these cuts. I love making cuts with this track saw because it's super satisfying, but this definitely has to top them all. I sand the entire top to remove all the extra wood filler and lines left by the router using 60 grit sandpaper. Next I moved on to making the walnut border for this table as I think it gives it a much more modern look. I think without this and if the entire table is made out of plywood it just kind of looks cheap in the end. After making a 45 degree cut on one side of the border, I used the table as a reference to make a mark on the other side. I then transferred this mark to the other side of the piece using my speed square so I don't have to swing my blade to the other 45 degree angle and risk making the wrong cut. I make a conservative cut and check with the piece before creeping up on the final mark to make it perfect. After gluing on the borders onto the top and letting it dry overnight, I sanded to make sure everything was flush between the borders and the top. I wanted to add a large chamfer to the bottom edge of this table, but I don't have a bit that's big enough, so I used this trick that I got from Blacktail Studios. You use your track saw on an angle and let it overhang the edge so you can cut the bottom chamfer. This is all quite simple to do, but the only thing you have to make sure you get exactly right is the amount you overhang your track over the edge when making this cut. If it is different too much, then the quarters where the two chamfers meet won't line up at all. As you can see, I checked the measurement multiple times to make sure it's perfect before clamping down the track and checking again before making the cut.
Now that I had sanded the entire top to 100 grit, I moved up to 120 grit and I'll show you exactly how I went through sanding this entire top. I'll only show you the sanding process at 120 grit because I followed the exact same steps for 150, 180, and 220 grit. As you can see, I took my time to sand the top with multiple passes in both directions so that I wouldn't miss any spots and it was all nice and even. I then sanded the chamfer and then everything else by hand, including the sharp edges. Now that the entire tabletop was sanded up to 220 grit, I wiped off any dust with the blue shop tile. If you've seen my other videos, you know I normally use Osmos 3043, but because I figured this plywood would suck up a lot of finish, I opted for this Armand Seal oil and urethane top coat. After I had applied finish to the bottom, I flipped it over and wiped down the top surface again with a blue shop towel before applying the finish with an old t-shirt. After you spread oil over all the tabletop, you want to go back and wipe in the direction of the grain, but it's important not to apply too much pressure here or you'll get streaking. I then let the finish dry for at least 12 hours before lightly sanding with 320 grit and repeating the same process. The final step of this process is to add threaded inserts to the bottom so I could attach the legs. I made a mistake by drilling the holes a little too big because I'm used to working with hardwoods, so I ended up just epoxying these in so they wouldn't go anywhere. I hope you really enjoyed watching the process of me building this herringbone pattern coffee table. I definitely made a few mistakes along the way, but I think I fixed them mainly and I'm super happy with how this table came out. Make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my new videos, and just sit back and enjoy all these beauty shots of this coffee table. Peace. Thank you.